We have spent some time discussing tissues and cells and organs of plants. The focus of this session is to think about how a plant actually grows. In previous sessions, we've discussed categorizing plants based on dicot and monocot structures, thinking about leaf parts, root structures, how leaves are attached to the plant, and so on. When we talk primary growth of a plant, however, we're more interested in the fact that it continues to grow throughout its lifetime. This is what we call indeterminate growth in plants. In animals, we have what's called determinate growth. You reach a particular height and you stop growing. If you grew like a plant, you would still be growing throughout your entire lifetime. You would be getting taller and taller and taller. Plants are categorized not so much on how they grow. They all have some form of indeterminate growth, but they're categorized instead based on how long they live. Some plants are what we call annuals. These are the plants that you're you would plant in your backyard many times. These are flowers, typically very showy flowers, and these are ones that would complete their entire life cycle, growth, reproduction, uh, and production of seeds in a given year. Biennials, on the other hand, actually have to take two years to complete their life cycle. A common one that you might not know as being a biennial is actually a carrot. To go through it as entire life cycle, growth, flowering, reproduction, and seed production takes two years. Perennials live for many, many, many years. These are your trees and some flowers and shrubs as well. But how do they actually grow? Well, plants grow in two directions. Primary growth is growth taller. Secondary growth is growth wider. And we'll look at secondary growth in a minute. But regardless of the type of growth, we need something known as a meristem. Meristem tissue is associated with the terminal bud that we called before the apical bud of our plant and our auxiliary buds. These are places where we have a lot of growth and the cell type primarily in these locations would be parenchyme cells. Why? Remember parenchyme cells are associated with high levels of metabolism. They're going to be required for growth. Now, when I say secondary growth is wider, don't think about this production of a leaf sticking out to the side of the plant as being wider. When we talk about width of growth secondary, we're actually just going to talk about the stem itself. And this is what we see primarily in trees. So we'll look at that more in a little while. With our apical stem growth, what we're looking for is this high concentration. See the very dark blue here? This high concentration of parenchyme cells associated with active growth and metabolic regions. So we see this both in the apical meristem, that very top point, and also the auxiliary buds that will produce stems out the sides and, and leaves out the sides of our plant. When we talk about primary growth in plants, we not only talk about the plant getting taller above ground, we also have to talk about the plant getting taller below ground. What does this mean? Well, this means root growth. So throughout the life of the plant, the roots will get longer and longer and longer. Now, when we look at these plant roots, how do they actually grow? Well, this zone of differentiation is actually closest to the stem of the plant and is what we call final in its figures. So what I mean by that is when we look at differentiation of cell types, 
differentiation means that the cells are grown up. That is what they're going to be. They will no longer change. And in many cases, these cells will become less active and may die. The zone of elongation is where we see these root cells actually growing. So the cells are divided very, very quickly in this zone of cell division, high metabolic activity, very quick division. Then they take time, slow down, and actually grow in the zone of elongation. Now they're not going to divide anymore. There is, there is no division associated with the zone of elongation. This is simply where we'll have the plants um, go through, the plant cells go through this elongation process. So the cells are simply getting bigger. The other thing on here that I wanted to point out to you is this thing known as a root cap down at the bottom. So essentially, I think about this like the little plastic end on your shoestrings. It protects the end. Now, when we look at this as far as a root, why do we need to protect the end of the root? Think about what it's growing into. It's pushing down through soil and rocks and dirt and worms and whatever. We have to protect those highly dividing cells in the end of that root so that they are not damaged. Again, bringing back our, our three types of, of tissue, vascular, ground, and dermal are all present in the root as well. So when we look at secondary growth, I mentioned to you it's primarily something we associate with trees, but it could be any woody plant, anything that has a bark on the outside and needs to have long-term growth associated with it, typically a perennial type of plant. In this growth, we're not only looking at the growth associated with the primary, the tree or plant is getting taller, but what we're more interested in with secondary growth is actually looking at how the plant is becoming wider, getting more girth associated with it. And this actually has to do with something known as the secondary xylem. So we have rings of this vascular tissue that we've talked about before associated with the stems or trunk of a tree. And when we look at that cross section, what we're actually building year after year are these layers of, of secondary xylem. So the primary xylem that's put down in the very first year of the plant, we see in all plants, we see this primary xylem layer and this primary phloem layer that are going to build up. But you notice between them, they have something known as vascular cambium. So we said a little while ago that cambium was very active tissue, and this is going to be the point of growth. So as we move through the year, first year of our plant, we're actually going to see that layer of vascular cambium get larger and larger and larger. And by the time we get to our second year, that secondary growth or that secondary xylem is much larger than what we originally saw. And throughout the course of a plant's life, we're going to see that continue to grow. You actually are probably familiar with this in the form of tree rings. So every year, a tree will lay down what we call a secondary xylem or annual ring that shows the process of that secondary xylem actually growing and getting larger and larger and larger. So it's adding to it. Now, we also have secondary phloem, but it has a different purpose. The secondary phloem's purpose is actually to produce bark or cork on the outside of our tree to protect it in the in the in the environment. So when we see this, we have this kind of center part that builds up and this is where we have our secondary xylem. All of this inside is going to be secondary xylem. But in, but on the outside, we have secondary phloem here associated with our bark. So the outside, the part of the tree that you could pick off on the outside of the bark is actually called cork. 
Okay, and it probably resembles cork to you in a lot of ways if you think about it. But the cork cambium is going to help produce that cork. The secondary xylem on the outside is going to be associated with building up from the vascular cambium, but it builds in very small layers. You see how thin this layer is compared to that center part that is all xylem. Okay. Now what's the difference here? You've got to remember what does xylem do? What does xylem move? versus what does phloem move? And in which direction? Up or down the plant?